Hey, what up guys, this is Ron PC Battle Stations, and Gabdius was kind enough to send me their Athena M2 case right here. Let's check it out and see if it's worthy of being in your battle station. So of course, the first thing that caught my eye was the front panel. It has the asymmetric front mesh that goes well with my wall design back there. It's also looking like the fractal design mesh by C and the S2. So it's a good looking case. Some of the things it has is the three built-in 120 millimeter fans, the ARGB Trio. And then it's got the two LED strips on the side so the RGB is definitely there. It's also got the magnetic dust filter that you can remove pretty easy on top. A tempered glass side panel. It's got a one touch where you can change the lighting modes and all kinds of lights here. So one of the buttons up here, the one on the left, uh, controls the, if you push it down, it goes from low, push it down again, medium, and then high. And then if you hold it down, it looks like it changed lighting modes. And then the one to the right of that, you can actually change the colors here. It's got all kinds of different color modes. Pulsing, faders, chasing, what have you. A lot of zippity doo dahs, what have you, husker do's, husker don'ts. You can also turn it off if you're not an RGB fan. So it's a $99 case, mid-tower, ATX, and what I really like is it's nice and compact. It's about 15.9 uh, inches long, 18.1 high, and about 8 point, what is it, 4, 6 inches wide. And for our metric friends out there, that's uh, 405 millimeters by 215 millimeters, and then tall is 460 millimeters. Uh, weighs about 13 pounds or 5.29 kilograms. So the motherboard support is obviously, it supports the full ATX, it also supports the micro ATX and the mini ITX. So let's take a look at the front panel. And obviously I said I like that asymmetric mesh design, which is really nice. You can actually remove it. So if it collects dust and all that, you can actually remove it with a simple couple clicks here. And then you can pull it off for some simple cleaning and some access to the fans, the 120 millimeter, the three Trio ARGB fans. And then you can also remove the front plastic on this too. La 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 Luke, I am your father. Oh, so these three fans are 120 millimeter. Obviously they're the Trio uh, fans and they're addressable LEDs, which I really like. And there's all kinds of different modes. Uh, and then you can also um, sync these with your motherboard and it uh, syncs with all the popular ones like Asus, ASRock, Gigabyte, and MSI, which is really nice. And they connect to the motherboard with that 5 volt 3 pin header. So the different fan configurations that you can put in here, you can do the 3 120 or you can do the 2 140s. And then also it supports a radiator in the front here. You can put a 360 rad or also a 280 rad. So take a look at the front I.O. panel which is on top. It has a USB 3, two USB 2s, HD audio, one button for fan LED control, and another one for fan speed control, which I also found that you can push down and that actually does the fan mode or the LED lighting mode. And what I like about the front mesh panel, it's got that asymmetric design, if you can see a little bit here. And it just pops in here real nice. All right, so take a look at the side of this panel. It's a dark tempered, really tinted tempered glass. Whether or not you like that, it's darker than some of my other cases that I've had. And removing this glass can be kind of tricky, so be careful. There's a big sticker on top that tells you the proper way of actually removing the side panel, the glass tempered glass. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna flip it on the side on the back panel, remove the two screws, and then you're gonna wanna slide up to pop that glass off. So if you have it straight up and down, like I didn't see that for a while, even though it has a giant sticker, who reads those stickers sometimes? 
So what I actually did is, you know, you remove the two thumb screws and then slide and be careful though because that glass will pop off and nothing's really kind of holding it other than the front and that's not doing a very good job and it just falls down, it could damage your desk, it could actually fall down, break the glass, I don't really know, but just be careful. Make sure you look at that glass or make sure you look at that sticker, put it on the back side and go ahead and remove that glass side panel. So the max length of the GPU that you can have in here is 12.9 inches or 330 millimeters. And my 2070 Super had no problem fitting in here. And also measured my 2080 Ti with three fan. Seems like it fit in here too. So most of the GPUs should fit in here, but just be careful if it is past that 12.9 inches, you know, you're gonna run into some problems trying to get that fit in here. Building in this PC was fun. I had installed three more standoffs for the full ATX size motherboard, which is not a big deal. And then um, run the cables, nice and easy. They had nice cable management holes on the bottom, right above the PSU shroud, right underneath the motherboard. And all along the right side, there were some slits. Uh, easily run all the power supply cables. And then uh, everything else, pretty much easy. I had to slide the radiator forward a little bit so I can fit my uh, rear fan in there and then um, make sure I installed the EPS cable first before I got that radiator actually installed because it's kind of hard to get back in there. So moving on up to the top of the PC, it has a magnetic dust filter, which is great, easily able to remove that. And then the radiator support, it supports all the way up to 240 millimeter, or you can put two 120 fans or two 140 fans. Moving on down to the bottom of the case, they had a PSU shroud, which had a nice little window in there so you can see your PSU. And then the max length for PSU is a 6.69 inches or 170 millimeters. Would have been nice to have a cover plate for that PSU so you can just slide that PSU right on in, throw that cover plate back on, call good. And the PSU shroud is vented so you can also install two 120 millimeter fans to help dissipate that heat. One thing I didn't like about, there was a dust filter on the bottom right underneath the PSU. And that's kind of hard to get to. So. What I had to do is you kind of had to kind of tip it over and kind of get at it. There's kind of little grooves where it kind of goes in. Would have been nice to have that dust filter be a magnetic one where you can easily remove it uh, or have a little slide out where you can just slide it out, clean it, slide it back in. Uh, you know, but this one's a little hard. You had to kind of tilt it over or actually lay it on the back panel and take it off. So that could be an improvement. And the legs on this case allow for good airflow, so that's good. Moving on to the back of the computer, it can support a 120 millimeter rad or you can have one 20 millimeter fan or one 40 millimeter fan. And then they have seven expansion slots. What I don't like about this is that the seven expansion slots are actually the punch out kind. Now on a $99 case, you'd think you should be able to have something a little bit better than the punch out, maybe some replaceable expansion slots because if you accidentally remove one, then you know it's pretty much gone. So moving on to the back panel, you can see there was a lot of included hardware, which is good. It had all extra standoffs. It had all the screws, uh, it had zip ties, which is really great. And on the left-hand side, it had a recessed part where you can actually run the cable management, which is really nice. Then you can also have uh, the little tie-downs for cable management. There's some on the top, there's some along down the side. So hard drives in this case, we had a two and a half inch tray right behind the motherboard. And then down by the PSU, there's a little caddy for two three and a half inch hard drives, or you can have a three and a half inch hard drive and also a two and a half inch one right on top. And then there's a lot of open room where that's all the cable management that goes down and you can stuff it back in there. And then the PSU, uh, you can probably extend it a little bit longer than that 6.69 inches if you don't have any hard drives installed back there. Uh, you, that frees up a lot of room. And there was some extra room where I can install my Thermaltake ring hub for the lighting control kind of down in there too. Let's talk about that PCB right in the middle. And that's a controller that controls the three fans there. It also has two LED controllers. Uh, one was for these little light strips here, and there's another free extra one you can use. And then uh, you can have the three here that control the lighting, and then have three extra ones you can also plug in there too. And that plugs into your five volt uh, three pin header on your motherboard, and that will allow syncing with uh, four of the major brands, which is Asus, Gigabyte, ASRock, and MSI. And I would like to see that possibly be movable um, I understand, you know, there's reasons why they probably want it right there, kind of a central place, not too bad. Also, would like to see a cover on that rather than just an open PCB. I want to see thermals in this case. I like the mesh front, a lot of good air movement through here. It's actually fairly quiet too, so I'm going to throw that down in the description, all the thermal testing that I've done, some thermal performance. 
So what I like about this case is obviously the aesthetics, like the front panel, the asymmetric matches my wall panels. And then I also like that it's a mesh, nice airflow. I also like the lighting, uh, the strips on the side, three pre-installed uh, RGB fans. And then I actually like the size of it. So for you know a mid tower, it's actually nice and compact. So it can save a lot of room on your desk rather than those giant cases that you know can take up a lot of room on your on your desk. Some of the things I don't like about this case are the expansion slots, their punch out. I would really like to see some replaceable expansion slots. And then the dust filter on the bottom, I would really like to see a magnetic dust filter or a little sliding tray. Another thing I want to see too, maybe some software or something that I can see exactly uh, what I'm actually pushing instead of cycling through all the different lighting modes. You know, it's not bad. You know, I like the one click. It's definitely here on the front panel. I can easily switch it. But sometimes it's kind of finicky. Sometimes it would actually not do what I want to do. And then you'd have to cycle through everything to kind of get it, you know, whatever uh, mode I wanted or, you know, lighting feature. So all in all, it's a decent case. But at $99, I'm going to want to see the expansion slots be replaceable, maybe magnetic dust filters, and some maybe some dedicated software some, for some uh, more granular or some quick lighting changes. Stay tuned for my PC build in this Gamdias Athena M2 case. It's going to be sweet. I'm really excited about it. i got some cool video editing tricks. I think you'll like it too. So see you guys in the next episode.